Six months after his departure from the Scotchbluff Police Department, former Captain Brian Wasson is charged in connection to stealing cash and drugs from the department's evidence room. KNEB.TV News starts right now. From your trusted source for news in western Nebraska and eastern Wyoming, this is KNEB.TV News. Presented by Platte Valley Companies, premier provider of financial services. Hello, I'm Ryan Murphy. This is KNEB.TV News, powered by Platte Valley Companies. Thanks for joining me. In our top story, it took six months for charges to be filed against a former Scottsdale Police captain, but Brian Wasson has already pleaded guilty to the charges. The 52-year-old left the force after it was discovered that he had stolen fentanyl and cash from the Scottsdale Police evidence locker for personal use. On Tuesday, Wasson was charged with theft of a controlled substance with a value of excess of $5,000 and theft of cash in excess of $5,000. Wasson faces 0 to 20 years in prison on each conviction and a preliminary sentencing date has been set for April 23rd. Well, a rural Scotsville family of seven lost their home in a fire of undetermined origin on Tuesday. Scotts Bluff Rural Fire Chief Carissa Shank Grubbs says her department was paged to the scene on Hague Road west of Scotts Bluff, finding the two-story home about 75% involved. She tells KNDB News mutual aid was requested from Mitchell, Gehring, Morrill, and Lyman Fire Departments as wind drove the flames into the rest of the structure. She says the fire was brought under control in a few hours, but crews did not clear the scene until before 3 a.m. this morning. No injuries to the occupants. However, numerous pets, including four dogs, perished, and one firefighter was taken to the hospital for treatment of heat exhaustion and released. Losses estimated at approximately $1 million, including several vehicles and farm equipment that was parked near the home. Firefighter Ministry has tended to the immediate needs of the family. We'll have more news right after this. develops into a passion. That passion continues to manifest and grows as you do. It becomes all you want to do and all you want to be. It gives you direction. It drives you. Then your dream has become a reality. When that dream is ready to be reality, Platte Valley Bank will be with you every step of the way. It takes a community to keep our waters clean. Please don't let pollutants be swept and carried away into our storm drains. This can cause problems like clogged storm sewers and contaminating the area's rivers, lakes, and ponds. Non-point source pollutants are not from one source or property, but instead from many sources and properties, which can impair our waterways. Even one piece of trash can add up. Tri-City Stormwater wants you to remember, it's our water, our responsibility. Welcome back. Scotts Bluff County Commissioners appointed a new county assessor Monday, but not without some discussion about whether it could be done on a provisional basis. Robert Simpson, who has been managing daily business operations of the office for a number, number of months, was unanimously approved on a 5-0 vote after an interview and recommendation by the selection committee. He was the only applicant and had passed the assessor's certification exam. Prior to that, Commissioners and committee member Mark Harris said, given Simpson's business, accounting, and personal background, he was an outstanding candidate. I think as he's come to us at our meetings here, he's um, handled things well, explained things well, and I believe in the overall scheme of things, um, he's a, uh, an excellent um, opportunity for us to be able to appoint him as the assessor. However, the approval was provisional, as the board's motion was to appoint Simpson to the post but withhold administering the oath of office pending a six-month probationary period. That provision was the topic of further discussion as to whether or not the board could impose such a requirement. 
Harris suggested that the board get a legal opinion on whether Simpson needed to be sworn in to be able to legally execute the statutory duties of the office, to which the rest of the body agreed. Board Chair Ken Meyer then reassured Simpson he was their top choice. You've got the job, obviously. Now we just need to figure out when, in fact, you're going to get sworn in. And if, if we get advice from legal that it's okay to swear me in and then do a, an evaluation in six months. The board agreed that staff should reach out to legal counsel for NACO and or NERMA for direction on whether a probationary period was allowable before he could be sworn in. Well, the City of Alliance will be pausing all municipal operations Thursday for several hours. Yesterday morning, it was announced that all facilities will be closed from 8 to 10 for an all-employee meeting. Thursday's closure will affect all departments with the exception of emergency services. Public transportation will not be running during that two-hour stretch. If you have questions, you can call the City Administration offices at 762-5400 for more information. And attorneys representing Planned Parenthood of the Heartland and the state presented oral arguments yesterday before the Nebraska Supreme Court on the constitutionality of the 2023 law that tightened restrictions on abortion and youth gender care. Planned Parenthood and the ACLU are appealing a Lancaster County District Court ruling that said the manner in which the measure was enacted did not violate the state constitution. ACLU attorney Matt Siegel told the court the measure violated the single subject rule for two reasons. But what we're dealing with in this case is not some broad rewrite of any field. It is not a broad rewrite of uh, medical procedure field or public health and welfare. It is the stitching together of two discrete aims. And the second that leads me to the second point I was going to mention at the outset, which is the court's cases have been clear for more than a century that the legislature is prohibited from joining two or more bills together so that the friends of each may pass them. Assistant Attorney General Eric Hamilton said the plaintiff's claim failed for two reasons. The first being the courts have deferred the issue to lawmakers to decide, and the second that it fails on the merits. Because the case involves the constitutionality of state law, five of the seven Nebraska Supreme Court justices must side with the plaintiff in order for their lawsuit to be successful. This isn't just a beautiful hospital. It's the home to exceptional patient care. This is where specialty clinics meet your needs. This is where a friendly smile, a warm hand, and an empathetic ear exist to care for you. This is us. Fox Butte General Hospital. Great things are happening here. For this week's featured pet of the week, we meet Sarge, a three-year-old domestic short hair that came into the Panhandle Humane Society as a stray five weeks ago. He's over 12 pounds, larger than life, but loves his head to get scratched. His adoption cost is $50, and that includes his neuter, microchipping, and all vaccinations. Meet Sarge or any of the other cats or dogs available for adoption. You can head on over to the Panhandle Humane Society daily during normal business hours. Welcome to Kelly's Liquor, your liquor cabinet. Whether you're a wine enthusiast, a whiskey sommelier, a tequila connoisseur, or you just love your beer, Kelly's has the best selection of what you're looking for. Family owned and operated since 1946 and right on 27th Street in Scotts Bluff. Come see us today at Kelly's Liquor, your liquor cabinet. And remember to be a good neighbor. Don't drink and drive. Kelly's Liquor, West 27th Street in Scotts Bluff.
take a look at your midweek community calendar brought to you by Riverstone Bank. The community calendar is brought to you by Riverstone Bank. We're local and we love our community. Panhandle Trails Intercity Public Transit, based in Alliance, Nebraska, is the only intercity bus serving Nebraska Panhandle communities and Pine Ridge, South Dakota. Panhandle Trails operates a regularly scheduled bus service, assisting you in making connections with Greyhound bus partners, regional airports, healthcare, employment and education opportunities, shopping, family, friends, and more. Panhandle Trails serves the general public of all ages and offers accessible transportation for those with special mobility needs. Let Panhandle Trails help you make your connection. Call 308-761-8747. At Platte Valley Bank, we want to help you take advantage of every adventure. We know you have plans, goals, and dreams. Let us help you with them. Whether you are just starting the business you have always imagined or looking to grow your existing one, we have a business loan to fit your needs. Stop in and see us at Platte Valley Bank and let us help make your dreams a reality. You belong here. Platte Valley Bank. Member FDIC. Equal housing lender. And finally, tonight's Easter is fast approaching, and the city of Scotch Bluff is excited about bringing back one of their popular events. Their annual Easter egg hunt is scheduled for Saturday, March 23rd at the Lander Soccer Complex. Kids aged 2 to 10 will be placed into specific age groups to go out and collect as many eggs as possible. This free event will take place on the 23rd at 11 a.m. and is hosted by the city of Scotch Bluff's Parks, Cemetery, and Tree Board Foundation. Well, that does it for us this time. Thank you so much for tuning in. Stay safe out there. We'll see you here next time.